morning, everybody. My name is Darlene, and I have Parkinson's. Welcome to Make It Monday. Today we're going to do shrimp and artichoke dip. It's a sort of fancy name for a very easy dish, and it's delicious. You can serve it hot or cold. We're going to choose to have ours hot. I'm making one for uh, my son and his wife, and I don't know whether they're going to do theirs hot or cold, but I'll give it to them tomorrow. They're coming by tomorrow. I'm going to hold up the recipe. I will put this into the uh, description box, but if you want to take a screenshot, let's see if I can do that without putting my fingers where it shouldn't be. So there's, you can take a screenshot of that, if, and, but I will put it in the description box. I have learned how to do that now. I'm going to just run over the ingredients. We have a block of cream cheese, any kind of cream cheese that you would like. It's best not to use the low fat but you can if you really desire to do that. Um, you need a couple of green onions. I've got those here. You've got half a cup of uh, diced celery, very small dice. Half a cup of sour cream mayonnaise or a mixture. I'm using the full half cup of sour cream. Two cans of shrimp. I'm going to use one can of shrimp here, just a little tiny. You want the, the cheapest ones you can find, the broken ones or whatever. And then I had some frozen shrimp as well. So instead of two cans, I'm using some of the frozen plus the can. It's equivalent to the two cans. Artichoke hearts. You can do it in water or in oil. These ones are in oil. This was a smaller jar. So this one here, I have three extra that were in water. So you want a slightly larger jar than what this is. And you want to drain that oil off. So I'm going to just get that draining. I'll just drain that while we're talking. Okay. And what's next? Oh, and then you want a little bit of garlic salt and seasoning salt to taste. So that's what this is, garlic salt and seasoning salt to taste. I've got about a half a teaspoon of each of them in there. And a few dashes of Worcestershire, which I forgot. So let me just go get it. Okay, I'm back. Worcestershire. All right, so this is very easy to do. I'm just going to start putting it all into the bowl. You want your cream cheese, of course, to be softened because you are going to beat this up and if it's not softened, you will never get it beaten. Now you will see, I do have trouble with my hands, so I'm not very glamorous when I'm doing this, but as long as I can still do it, I will. Okay. I always, because I'm not very good, I always keep a damp cloth so that I can wipe my hands. All right, so I've got my cream cheese, and I've got my um, spices. Now I'm going to cut up some green onions here. Now I'm not, you will notice I am not very good with chopping, but I just compensate where I can because, you know, if you stop doing everything, then pretty soon life will be pretty sad and miserable. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to just keep on even if I'm not very graceful at it. I think I'm my own worst critic because I know that this used to be so easy and whatnot. Another thing that I tend to do, I don't know why. If I'm talking on the phone or if I'm sitting in my chair, I sort of slowly get slumped, slumped down. But when I'm cutting vegetables, I do the same thing in my chair here. It's like I'm gonna fall off my chair one of these days. I don't know why I do that. It's just from wiggling, I guess. But. And now I'm going to cut the celery really small because it's so much easier to mix with the mixer if you do it then. So you don't want big hunks of it. Alright. Oh, you can't 
see my bowl. Um, well, I'll show you the bowl when I get finished the celery. I'll put the celery over here. I'm going to, I've already taken the ends off of it. So I'm just going to, these ones here are the tender insides as well. You can use any part of it you'd like, but my husband doesn't like things that are super crunchy. So the tender insides are a lot easier for him to eat. So there we are. Now I'll just cut those into little fine dice. And you know, the thing is too, if you warm them up, then of course your vegetables also, move there, you, uh, your vegetables will also get more tender than if you serve it cold. But you know, if you're having like a, a, a guests over or something, it's kind of nice to have something cold as well as something warm. So, you know, just figure out what you're gonna serve. And if you've already got something warm, then make this a cold dip. And if you need a hot dip, this will work. I have a, a recipe for a, a mushroom dip that's really nice for like a Christmas thing if you're having people in and whatnot. But we don't have people in other than on Christmas Day. We have our kids come over unless they're busy doing something else. But when we lived in the East Coast, we didn't get to have Christmas with the kids. So this has been really nice to have the last few years with them. But I said to Colleen and Ashley, you know, I understand if they have to spread their time out between the families, I can't monopolize everything. All right, I'm going to now put the shrimp in. You can see back here. See, I'm just going to dump everything into the one thing. There's no rhyme or reason to how you have to do it. You just get it done. Let's see, a few dashes of this Worcester. Worcestershire. I did my kids one earlier, put it in the fridge, and I forgot to put this into it. So, I don't know what difference that's going to make to theirs, but unfortunately, I forgot it. So, and now let's, I'm going to now take the few that I had before. I'm going to cut them up small before I add them. Now these ones were just in water, so they, they don't have any oil or spices or anything onto them. The other ones were a fancier one. I was buying these ones the other day. I was buying them online because I had my groceries delivered. And uh, as you know, my daughter was in the hospital, so she sometimes can get our groceries and bring them, but she was in the hospital, so we had them delivered. Well, when I was trying to use the online site, it wouldn't tell me whether they were in water or oil or marinated or uh, there's nothing that said. So I had to take a chance and they did come in water. So that's what I used in the other one. Now in this one, I'm going to add these. They're, they were marinated, so they're very soft and nice. And you know, if somebody thinks that they don't like artichokes, you can't overly taste them when it's in a dish like this. You know, there's so many other flavors and whatnot that you really can't tell. And you're blending it all up and it's, you know, it's very easy to mix it in, you know. All right. And then I'll add that. And the sour cream. Now, let me just double check that I've put everything in. Let me make sure that I've, I've got it all done here. Let's see. All my trash. Good heavens. Yes, I think I have. Got it all in. There's nothing left over here. All right, so that's good. I'm going to just 
weight my board a little bit so I can put my bowl onto it. There we are. And now I'm going to use the mixer. I hope it's not too loud. We're just going to mix this all up. And you can always look at it. If you think that it's not going to be moist enough, you can add more sour cream or more mayonnaise, but really, it, for us, it's good just the way it comes out like this. off of the batter, or off the beaters. There we are. Well, good heavens, my hands are not working there whatsoever. All right, now, I'm just gonna go wash my hands. I'll be right back. Take this mess with me. I'll be right back. these two little dishes. I think they're so pretty. At Christmas time they're red and just nice. Okay, let me move this so you can see. I'll bring this down here. Can you see that? Yes. All right. Now, I sprayed the dishes. You do not have to, but I just do because it makes it a lot easier for cleaning. I mean, if you were having it cold, you certainly wouldn't need to spray it. But if you're gonna warm it up, it's nice to spray. All right, there we are. I do have a story today as well. So don't go anywhere. All right. So that's oops. That is basically what the dip is. I'm gonna wipe my hands there. I will put saran wrap on these and then I will put them into the refrigerator and I will use them for supper my story. I had some company coming over. This was a long time ago. And I thought I would try cooking a turkey on the barbecue. Never done it before. They tell you don't cook something you've never cooked before um, when you're having company. And I did learn that lesson. Now, I had got the cookbook from a gas station. That was my first mistake. Don't trust gas station cookbooks. Then I got it and the instructions were bizarre. But I'm a dutiful little girl. I read the recipe and I did exactly what it said. And what it said to do was take, the, take a roasting pan. On the outside bottom and sides of the roasting pan, take dish soap and cover that so that your pan would clean up ever so nicely after being on the barbecue. And I thought, well, that was a very good tip of them just so I wouldn't have to scrub it. Then it said just to get your turkey prepared as you would normally and put it in. But they suggested that you didn't stuff the bird. You do your stuffing outside. Fine and dandy. I did that and I put a nice rub on the top, put the tin foil all nice and tight around it like it said. It said add a cup of water. I added a cup of water 
and put it on the barbecue at the temperature that is, that is gas barbecue. And then it said, do not, in capital letters, do not peak for five hours. Well, I never thought about the fact that they weren't asking me the size of the bird. No, I did have a, a good sized bird. I had a 15 pound bird, but it didn't say. Now, normally you're timing your temperature or your turkey by how big it is. It just said, do not peak for five hours. So fine, I didn't peak. I left it in there for the five hours and I was thinking, oh, it's on so low that it's getting juicy and oh, it's gonna be wonderful. Got all my side dishes ready company came over and we went to do the magnificent presentation of the turkey. We opened the barbecue and I said that doesn't smell right. We took this tinfoil off and I had no turkey inside there. It was cinders. There was, you couldn't have saved one bite. The bones were powdery. Like it was completely burnt and I threw the roasting pan out because I could not clean it even with the soap on the outside. So then we had all side dishes and no meat and we laughed about it and I said I will never again try doing something that I've never done and I will not buy a recipe book from a gas station. <laughs> anyway, that's my story for today. We'll see you tomorrow.